Hello and welcome everyone. We're delighted to be with you virtually to talk about connectivity, security, and how cities can track their data using LoRaWAN. My name is Sarah Brown and I'm Vice President of Marketing for Multitech and I will be your moderator for today's panel. Joining me are Whale Gabin, Director of Wireless and IoT Research and Development for Charter Communications, Nicholas Jordan, Chief Operating Officer at Actility, and also Boris Stockermann, Director of Business Development and Innovation at Minol Zenner Group. Thanks for being with us, gentlemen. Thank you. So just to set the stage a little bit, we'll take a look at the wide universe of uh, the Internet of Things, which is the community uh, that all of us work in. Uh, basically, the Internet of Things are things you want to monitor and connect with across basically any industry on Earth that you can think of. Um, what's interesting is when you start to get into all the many things you might connect to, uh, you realize that 75% of these things are only connecting uh, very, very small amounts of data. Um, contrary to the cellular community that's always looking for faster speeds and more and more data, uh, many of these things, for example, in the agriculture setting, really only need to alert you, for example, it's time to water. So honing in on smart cities, I kind of wanted to take you through a couple of key drivers that I see uh, motivating municipalities around the world to connect more and more of their assets. Uh, one of them is a very traditional IoT application and that is uh, cost control. How do we improve operational efficiency? The other is service improvement and then from my perspective, the holy grail of smart cities is really emergency response. Um, to make that happen, there's a whole host of different applications, and this is a very incomplete list. Uh, I'm not showing you this to talk into all the possible use cases that apply in smart cities, but rather to alert you to the fact that the different applications have different connectivity requirements. Uh, something like uh, video surveillance does in fact require the kind of high bandwidth uh, data streaming that you might want to have for your Netflix uh, application at home. Whereas certain things like, you know, are the street lights on or off might only send one or two messages a day, very small messages at that. Which is why um, in many smart city settings, you're going to find a variety of connectivity technologies at play. Some may be shorter range technologies um, like Wi-Fi, which we're all very familiar with. Uh, others, longer range technologies like cellular communications. And both of those have strengths and weaknesses. Um, one of their weaknesses being that while they offer a, a lot of bandwidth, they don't really support long lasting battery life. So if you want to connect something that's far away and uh, battery operated, especially for long periods of time in the field, you're gonna wanna try something like a new caliber of t connectivity technology, which we call LP-WAN. Um, that's kind of like Wi-Fi in buildings that you can uh, connect things, but that are battery powered things, or kind of like cellular outside of buildings where you get the long range, but also you're supporting long battery life at the same time. However, they're really not great for really high data rates like we use for Wi-Fi and, and uh, broadband cellular. So LP-WAN is a generic term for a group of technologies. Um, there are two principal technologies that are out in the marketplace today. Uh, one uh, is LoRaWAN, that's what we're here to talk about. Uh, the other is NB-IoT. And one of the key things to think about when you're deciding between LoRaWAN or NB-IoT is how do you want to manage your network connectivity? Um, what's really interesting about LoRaWAN is it enables you to do deploy and manage your own network, just like you do with your own Wi-Fi network. Uh, you can own it, you can manage it, it can be all yours, you have complete control over it. Or, conversely, you can uh, buy network services from an operator. 
whether you want to do your own network or deploy a, a service on a network operator, as you can see from our map, uh, LoRaWAN networks are available around the world. And this map just keeps getting more and more yellow almost weekly. Uh, you're looking at a snapshot from July. I suppose we'll probably have a new snapshot for you coming out soon. Um, and then just to close out, I just oop, wanted to tell you a little bit about the LoRa Alliance, since we are all members of the Alliance. Uh, which in fact is the largest group of IoT companies on planet Earth. We've gotten so big, uh, our eye chart is, is really almost unreadable. Uh, we are an open nonprofit association of members. We were launched in 2015. Um, we develop and maintain a global open specification, um, and we provide certification for LoRaWAN devices. So, that's who we are. And with that, I will let you get a little deeper into the technologies with Whale from Charter. Whale? Uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Wael Giben. I am Director of Wireless and IoT R&D at Charter Communication. And I also have the pleasure and the privilege of uh, chairing the marketing committee for the uh, LoRa Alliance. Um, Uh, just, uh, I would say a little bit of context around charter communications because we are only kind of a US focused uh, um, uh, uh, telecommunication and mass media company. So uh, I guess the, due to the uh, international um, uh, audience we might, who might not know who we are. So we operate in 41 states out of the, uh, the US um, and uh, we uh, connect 30 million plus uh, uh, customers um, into broadband. We recently also launched our 4G and 5G offerings uh, in, in less than two years, a 1.2 million plus subs subscribers. But most importantly, in the context of cities, we have a branch called Spectrum Enterprise who deals with um, enterprises, SMEs, uh, businesses, uh, the governmental, I would say, uh, affairs also, uh, and, and smart cities. Uh, Spectrum reach and networks are more on the kind of advertisement and uh, the, uh, the media. Uh, the news, I would say, type uh, um, uh, organizations. Uh, but let's focus on our main topic today. So we're talking smart cities. And let's try to understand what makes a, a city smart and how we can define a smart city. So it's, there is definitely the component of connectivity, sensors, software, and everything that we install and everything that we put together uh, in the city, but it's not only that, it's, it's more than that. It's the ability really to deliver intelligent capabilities and improve quality of life for the constituents by using technology to respond in real, in real time to the ever uh, changing env environment. That's what really makes a city uh, uh, smart and, and more can engage with the constituents. Um, and also the fact that whether we're at home, at work or at, uh, at school, on the go or around the town, the smart city is focused on making a community desir desirable, livable, and improve the quality of the lives of those within them. Uh, so this is, these are, I would say, the two tenets that we are going to talk about today and how we can achieve that using um, multiple uh, technologies and LoRaWAN is one of them, of course. Uh, let's look at smart city, I would say, in action. So here uh, we're looking at different, uh, um, uh, different, I would say, applications that makes the smart city. Um, from, from transportation to water and waste management, to parking, to, um, to smart lights, um, and technologies that can enable them from uh, surveillance to body cameras, wearables, drones. I, I know it's a bit, I would say, over, all over the place here, so we'll try to organize it, um, I would say, in the next slide, uh, maybe. Um, here we're looking more kind of to map all kind of these uh, applications into verticals that will allow a, a city to become smart and, and, and to kind of have a smart city solution and infrastructure. It, 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 as, as, our, as we were saying at the very beginning, it's uh, sensors and devices from cameras, from uh, st street lights, traffic lights, kiosks, to um, infrastructure and, and uh, networks uh, like the fibers and the coaxes and the 4G and 5G and, and, and LoRaWAN, of course. 
Um, and this is actually, the way we look at this is it's a continuum of application and a continuum, I would say, of connectivity. And that's why with, with Charter, we believe in the multi ramp strategy where every, um, there is no kind of solution that fits all the use cases and then there's no connectivity that will serve all the use cases. And here, if we zoom in a little bit more on LoRaWAN, we see that it actually um, is very suitable to uh, applications where we have small amount of data being sent and uh, battery, I would say, operated devices and a need of uh, long ranges and also a need of kind of running multiple applications on the same infrastructure. That also something that we can achieve quite easily um, with LoRaWAN uh, technology. So I'll read through a few of these applications, of course, uh, um, one of them is smart lights, the smart grid, smart building, but we see all that actually LoRaWAN is not that, I would say, uh, it's not into a niche market. It's really a kind of expanding beyond a si single, I would say, vertical. We're getting into also a smart int and intelligent transportation and even in the public safety, as, as kind of Sarah pointed out, especially on the environmental monitoring, because we want to have uh, further out, I would say, assets reporting on uh, uh, further out assets uh, uh, sensing outside the environment, capturing data, being also on batteries and, and reporting to infrastructure miles and miles away. So if we look at the, uh, just a small kind of uh, uh, example of a smart city and uh, actually of an award-winning uh, smart city, we can look at uh, St. Pete, for example, and the Innovation District and the University of Florida, the work that they are doing there. Um, we can see actually it's it's really it's a continuum of applications and it's it's not a single application that will make the a, a smart city but um, it's all this kind of building blocks of applications and uh, different technologies coming together to achieve the goal of smart cities here we talk about smart lightning and of course sensors like the temperature humidity the uh, the environmentals they can all be uh, and they can all i would say operate quite easily and um, on, on LoRaWAN uh, we also look at uh, something else like this traffic intersection, uh, traffic and smart in, uh, intersection um, on, on, uh, on broadband. And, and it's really that kind of uh, multi run strategy where LoRaWAN has a um, consistent place and, and a very good, I would say, place in the uh, uh, LP1 uh, 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 kind of business. Um, I'll stop here and uh, thank you very much. So, yeah, thank you very much. Well, so uh, welcome from my side. My name is Boris Tuckerman and I'm the Director of Business Development and Innovation from Minol Zeno Group. We are located in uh, Germany primarily, operating uh, all over Europe, but we also are active in, uh, with Minol and the US, having big manufacturing also in, in China. So Zara, if you could go for the next slide directly. So we started with LoRaWAN on a journey. Our journey starts five years ago with the LoRa Alliance. Uh, and you see right now, we are actually, we are coming from a sense of production near, we were doing water meters and still these, do these, but we are also doing services and uh, housing industries. So we are right now producing sensors, gateways. We are also running our own network. We are operating four cities and running networks, LoRaWAN networks, four cities. And right now we already transformed ourselves into an IoT solution provider based on LoRaWAN. So we're covering primarily 12 countries all over Europe. We already enabled more than 1,600 cities running LoRaWAN devices. We have more than 18,000 LoRaWAN device gateways in place and more than 1.6 million devices. So in comparison to a telco operator, this sounds not so much, but for why I'm raising these figures, we, I want to show you that LoRaWAN is no longer uh, proof of concept technology. It's a very robust, stable, secure and scalable, independent and open collaborable technology, which has enabled you as a city to run your own network. Uh, what we are doing, we are running these devices with LoRaWAN. Primarily, these are water meters measuring consumption of tenants. We're having heat cost allocators and we're doing smoke detectors. So next job, please. So as well already shown, so when you're talking about IoT use cases with LoRaWAN, the tremendous good thing is you can run, run all of these different IoT use cases, and these are only a few of them what you see here. You can all run this within one single network. So one technology fits 
almost all these use cases. It's traffic management, it's lightning, it's air quality, it's security, it's parking, it's noise, it's weight, it's almost everything. And this is a technology with collaborating cities and bringing departments together. Thank you, next. So we are working from LoRaWAN in a smart city. We define it, we start with a smart buildings. So LoRaWAN gives you the chance to operate within one building, starting from there, like your town hall or public uh, uh, buildings, and expand with the same network technology far out and coverage all over the region in the city. So you see here two models. One is the most common one is when a city provides network coverage with LoRaWAN on high buildings, or using uh, uh, towers to mount so-called outdoor gateways. These gateways receiving all the data from all the devices, uh, but you also can run this with indoor gateways, having a specific coverage dedicated to one building. So what we are doing, we, we're doing primarily focus on apartment and building management by looking into motion and temperature, humidity, the consumption of people are using but we also can have this in cities for checking water leakage detections, um, having oil level monitoring, street lighting, or what else. Uh, CO2 consumption uh, is something we were talking about three years ago, but now it's getting really obvious in the market due to having the fight and trouble with COVID-19. So people counting, using all the same network infrastructure, seeing surveilling fire extinguisher, door, door control, people moving in building, yes or no, uh, and of course, smart parking and electromobility. So, summaring up, this is a small little town, this is my hometown, and the nice thing what you see here is the city of Herrenberg, it's only 20,000 people, but the community started with involving their citizens. And what you see up in the upper left picture, those guys are mounting a street uh, temperature measurement to so way if there needs to be in winter a salting of the streets needed or snow needs to be removed. In the past, somebody has to stood up early morning, four o'clock, drive there and check is it uh, if the road is freezing. Now they can easily do this remote. You see the in the middle down there, you see a um, waste paper uh, basket which is completely overcrowded. And you see this is an underfloor container. By using LoRaWAN, the guys from the city know now when to go there to, to clean up the, the uh, waste and empty the waste thing, right? And on the left bottom, you see there we're implementing 60 parking lots. And this was all initiated by the citizens. And now the city takes care for it, and they're running it in the same single own network of the city. Thank you, Sarah. Ah, you're on mute, uh, <laughs> doesn't matter. Hi everyone, so I'm Nicolas, I'm the CEO of Actility, and you can see on the pictures my uh, pre-COVID pre face and now my post-COVID <laughs> bear. Uh, Sarah, if you mind, you can switch to the next slide. Just uh, in Actility, in few words. Uh, mainly what you have, who has already said, uh, so LoRaWAN is a reality, and as Actility, we are a global company, and we are man managing more than 35,000 uh, gateways all around the world. Uh, and maybe we can switch to the next slide. We can, I can, we already have a map. It's a mix of public and private networks. So what does that mean? Public networks, it's when it can be served through service providers or municipalities and private networks most of the time manage for enterprise. So you can see the trends is definitely there with a very important project uh, managed by a, a key uh, corporates. Now you can see on the bottom and, and large service provider that you can see uh, directly linked uh, into the map, Sarah can move to the next slide. So I think here, what my idea here is was to go in further regarding the previous presentations to really drill down a little bit the what I call the drivers and the, the, the main pillars. So the, it's transport and mobility because the, the urbanization is increasing. So there is an issue there. The environment, it's obvious, 60 to 80% of the world energy and greenhouse emissions are uh, uh, sent by the cities. Maintenance and operation, it's something completely critical for uh, and, uh, on the management and, and IoT really can help. And the comfort, safety and security is really important to bring also a, a level of satisfaction for citizens. And even we have been driver on some opportunities in South America when the mayor 
was pushing for an IoT to just show that he's really doing progress by the management of the city. So the, the last message of that slide is to see that one of the solutions is really that the cities, they really take themselves the, the, the capability to build this multi uh, use cases networks to serve the, the, these different pillars. So let's drill down in more details the ROI that you can get by providing a few examples. Thank you, Sarah. So in the transport and mobility, well, it's, this one is quite well known, but it's important to remember that 30% of the car driving in downtown are looking for a place, so it's crazy. So we need to find smart, we need to put smart parking solutions to be able to find a place and reduce the pollutions. But there is in fact a behind you, other use cases is the fact that it's a really good way also to increase the budget of the city because in fact you can point directly the policemen to send the fine to the places that has not been paid. So that's the hidden, at the value of bringing back the smart marking uh, technology. Another example, if there are many smart cities, when you have the 314 scooters and bikes, they are mainly stolen or broken. And in some, con uh, in, like in Paris, 10% of the 314 scooter and bike are destroyed or disappear. So now we need to track them. There is also, uh, a, 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 we need also to make sure that they are not in the middle of the sidewalk. And so tracking, and now we bring with LoRaWAN tracking technology to, to have a better behavior and to, to reduce uh, the, this problematic that has to be paid by the citizen ID. And it's always a, a question of cost. On the environment uh, uh, pillar, the, one of the things that trends that we see is that the, the buildings must be renovated to really uh, do uh, saving energies. And there is a, a, make, a, a very nice contract capability called energy saving performance contract that you can sign to let's say free of charge be able to renovate your buildings and the companies that are renovating the building are paid on the energy saving that they are doing this. But uh, there are some constraints to know what is the energy savings and IoT will help by be used at a trusted third party to by, by developing an automatic thermal model with a, ter with a uh, temperature sensor to be able to control what is the really energy gain. It's a very clever way to finance renovations with all the schools and the city with uh, just simple on computer science and environment, on environmental sensor. On the maintenance and operations, uh, water link in the distribution network, more than 20% of the clean water is lost over main cities. It, it, of course, so it's very expensive for everyone. So having pressure and flow measurement really, really help. Another a nice example is the fact that uh, um, in, when you are working with water utilities or gas utilities, and you, when you, most of the time, when they deliver, the utilities deliver themselves the, the, the smart network, they, are, they locked the cities. Because the, when you want to switch to reduce the price to every 10 years, for example, from a utilities to another one to manage your water, then you are locked because they bring and they, the, the, the connectivity. If the city owns the connectivity, they can force the utility to use their network and be enabled to, after a couple of years, to switch to another utilities to reduce the price, thanks to the fact that they will, the city will own the smart meter. The last uh, pillar is the comfort, safety, and security. Uh, we have the example in the Netherlands where the, uh, the street sign can be cause serious issues on the road user and pedestrian if the road sign has degraded. So we have uh, uh, installed a huge number of traffic sign uh, sensors uh, with accelerometers, and every time the, the sensor is laid down or has been shocked, it can be replaced. Otherwise, the city can engage their liabilities in case of injury. Uh, last example is the um, uh, manhole monitoring. There is a lot of uh, uh, thief uh, about the copper that can be stolen. And we have uh, an example that we are deploying in uh, Serbia. And uh, they are, we are providing, uh, they have gained over the years more than 10 million euros by uh, being able to secure the, the, through the manhole monitoring opening, the, the fact that uh, the copper has been stolen and they can send security and policemen, uh, policemen, policemen there. So that's just exam more detailed example. And the last slide, Sarah, is, uh, is related to, so it's a reality. We saw an example of, uh, of small cities, but uh, also big ones now are moving. And of course, as you're aware, China is most of the time very advanced on a lot of subjects, in, including the COVID. And for smart city, they, um, they really have now one 
or from my knowledge, one of the biggest deployments that we have done with them. Over 250,000 sensors has been deployed uh, on most uh, more than 40 uh, use cases. It's a very impressive subject, and that you can be certain that uh, in Europe and in the US and the other regions, you, the, the, the trends will follow. So we will be all happy to help you to, to, to develop uh, this, <laughs> all these, uh, these projects. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, I think we're a little bit short on time for the uh, discussion, so make sure that you're not on mute and, uh, and we'll dive right in. I've got questions for all of you. Um, first of all, one of the things that I really was impressed with when I started working in LPWA and specifically Laura Wan is that it has opened the door both financially and functionally for applications we never would have considered viable in the past. Um, can you guys describe for me an application or a use case that you've seen that you never would have expected uh, before Laura Wan became available? Yeah, may I, may I start, Sarah? Sure. So, uh, so one of the, although we are in the water industry with the water meters, what we're doing, I never expected that that this would have such an impact all over Europe. So you may know that there is the energy efficiency directive in Europe. This demands that every person living in an apartment gets on a fingerprint their consumption. I just ask you, when you're watching this uh, panel here, just try to get now an information about how much water you used last month or how much spent you take on your heating last month. You won't be able to, you will be able to find an application where you can get this, but you won't get the data because the infrastructure is not there. And by taking LoRaWAN, being able to, to get this information from locations, think about where your water meter for your apartment is, there is no power supply. There you need a battery light uh, powered supply sending this data. And this is massively growing. And we just saw from Nicola the expand example for Shanghai. I know uh, France, there is a water management solution which covers only water. Oh, you lost for us. Water management for about 500. We, hello? Nicolas, do you have one? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, water euros. meter is, uh, well, it's true that we are deploying right now uh, uh, 3 million uh, sensors around France for to connect it over Laura one for water metering but regarding your questions about let's say what is was unexpected if I have an example the connected mouse trap I think it is one of the for smart cities for pets control and and, and, and find also where are the the, 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 the the food sources that was the most unexpected project additional to what I already introduced <laughs> what about you whale so I actually, I, I, I'll tend to put another, I would say, spin on that question. What I want to, uh, what I actually can uh, touch on is really the, the ability of LoRaWAN to adapt to some, some of the new circumstances. So um, we talked about water meters, we talked about, I would say, the, uh, the, the infrastructure, but the, the, the beauty of it is that that infrastructure, once in place, can run in multiple applications and can run even applications that, that no one thought about even a year ago, which is contact tracing for COVID-19. This is something that we can run today also on top of LoRaWAN and that can um, successfully also uh, uh, run on top of, of the existing infrastructure and the existing investments of LoRaWAN. So cities can take advantage of that to, to, uh, to, to measure, I would say, the, uh, the, um, the security and the safety of their citizens and to engage with them a little bit better when it comes to the new unknowns and kind of uh, manage the new unknowns. I can give you uh, give a concrete example. Uh, in March, uh, in Spain, where the crises were quite high, the 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 hospital was overfilled, and they have to find other facilities uh, like uh, sport uh, facilities and hotels and and tent. And the uh, the problem is to track the the guys who are so attached to the bed. We have put trackers, and then you, when you push the button, they can know where you are. And if you want to call the nurse, the call, call the nurse button was not available outside the hospital facility. Thanks to Laura, with a with a, a nice tracker with an emergency button, we were able to uh, to call the nurse well on this new facility that has been extended. And now, of course, now the project for proximity detections. There are some smart badge 
type of uh, solutions that allowed you to detect and to do the, the contact tracing because the beep is not it's important but what is important is to do the, the contact tracing behind it in case of someone has been detected as uh, being uh, positive to the covid that's the example now right now we are deploying here yes i i um put up on one of my earliest slides that emergency response was a critical driver for smart cities and you guys are kind of tapping into that addressing the um addressing the pandemic that is for sure an emergency that we all need to respond to boris did you have uh something that you wanted to add in terms of how laura wang can feed those kind of emergency response yeah. applications yeah, i hope my line is still stable now I'm you sorry. sound good now <laughs> so, yeah. so so there are actually two things popping up extremely uh one is the co2 alarms so we've got many many requests from hundreds of schools and municipals right now if we can help them providing a co2 uh, sensor based on Loravan. combine this with a messaging system giving an alarm to the teacher or to the uh, um, um, uh, take care in the building to open windows you know, of course in germany or all in europe it's not so quite useful that we have everywhere um, uh, air conditions you know and so the people go have to open the windows to get clean air and but the biggest thing what uh, our own business is driving the smoke detectors so we have the law in germany yet you have to build in smoke detectors in every living room when you rent an apartment right so this needs to be maintained because it's not helpful to have one in your room but the battery is is uh, low and it's not working in the case of emergency and regularly you have to have to check this once per year minimum you have to ensure this and for this somebody has to come to your apartment nobody is willing to have a service guy coming to your apartment and this we are doing with Laura Man. oh cool well we're running out of time here guys so i want to do this last one as a lightning round okay um for each one of you, and we'll start with Nicola because you're in my upper right hand corner. Um, give me one piece of advice uh, that you would give to uh, municipal uh, personnel, authorities, CIOs, uh, council people uh, for building out their smart city to give them some direction and advice for how to do that. Because um, most of the use cases uh, can be solved through battery-based sensors, um, I think one of the important messages is to understand that when you deploy smart cities, you think about most of the time uh, cellular and Wi-Fi for high bandwidth. And let's say that LoRaWAN is my, if I may say, is the Wi-Fi for battery-based IoT solutions and to serve all the use cases that we are already introduced uh, during the, the session. Uh, well. Uh, I think I can re-emphasize what Nicola was saying there, which is like it's it's a it's a complex I would say world made of complex um, um, and kind of diverse uh, use cases, and there is no definitely no um, approach or no technology that fits all, uh, and and LoRaWAN does has its play in the LP1 space in the in the smart city space, and the smart city will be made of these different use cases served by different technologies. Yeah, and maybe. Boris. Yeah, maybe last point. So whatever you start talking about IoT, don't get confused with the discussion about the technology. The key driver is what you want to solve. What is the, the use case when you want to get a solution on? And don't start to invent from scratch. Look around your worldwide, not only in your own hometown, look worldwide. There are hundreds of IoT use cases already live, robust running with LoRaWAN. Of course, they are under technologies. Don't try to do it on your own. Involve others, involve your citizens, work across departments. This is quite important because we found so many cities working in parallel within one city and they didn't even know that they are doing the same thing. Share your network, but avoid to share it for critical infrastructure. Open it up and try to get up and running solution try to get in contact with people doing this for years now and having experience if you don't know to contact go and contact Laura Alliance we are more than 500 companies worldwide doing this sensors software solutions helping you the running your own stuff okay 
Thank you, Boris. That was perfect. And you saved me 20 seconds of a pitch for contacting the Alliance because we do have members all across the value chain to help you um, make your vision a reality. I also want to recommend to you, uh, if you have an opportunity later, to also uh, connect to our other panel about uh, use cases. They'll be diving into real life stories about real life use cases in place in cities around the world. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you all for joining us. This thank you very fun. much. Thank you. Have so a good one. Bye everyone. Bye bye. <laughs> Cheers.